1957, Francis Crick first proposed that chemicals called bases along the spine of the DNA molecule function as alphabetic characters in a written language or digital characters in a machine code. This animation shows how this digital information directs protein synthesis. First, a large protein complex separates the tightly wound strands of the DNA to prepare it to be copied. During this process of transcription, a protein complex called a polymerase produces a single-stranded copy of the original instructions. Here we see this copy, a messenger RNA molecule, being constructed inside the polymerase as individual bases are positioned and added to the growing strand. Now we see the polymerase in action from the outside as it spits out the messenger RNA transcript. Next, this RNA transcript approaches and passes through a molecular machine called the nuclear pore complex, an information recognition device that controls the flow of information in and out of the cell's nucleus. And I think this is very important in solving structures of this kind because the difficulty is that you've got to get several logical steps one after the other. If you get go wrong, you get one person gets too fond of their own ideas. I think another thing that which helped us in our collaboration was we weren't at least afraid of being very candid to each other to the point of being rude. And if you don't have constant interchange and chatting together and saying what you think of the other people's ideas to their face, I don't think you can solve problems of this kind. Uh, I've often had the thought with a slightly different way that if either of us, you know, were either two years older or two years younger, at least in my case, I would have never solved it. Yes, I mean, we had to be there just at that particular time. This is science on a grand scale. Hundreds of researchers across the world working towards one goal, cataloging all the DNA sequences in the human genome to find out how active they really are. Today was, was launched to identify every round. single gene that goes into creating a human being. It was called the Human Genome Project. This had to be uh, the most exciting, momentous kind of science that humankind could have contemplated up until this point. Reading our own instruction book, it is momentous in the sense that you only do it once. If you do it right, that is. <laughs> once it's done, it's done, and it will basically allow you to cross a bridge that you will never go back across in the future from ignorance into knowledge. The first time I learned about DNA is when I came to provide DNA sample for a family member. When the results came back, I passed them, you know, I sent them around to family members and uh, the doctor and a bunch of people in my family who had worked in medical administration commented on that those results were very, very similar and that that wasn't normal. So an idea popped into my head that maybe because we had such similar stories uh, that could have been a factor in our similarities in DNA. So I went online and looking at this, this is like September or, or before September 2012. And there was all this new DNA stuff everywhere, but you had to be looking for it because none of the news headlines were covering it. Essentially, a first draft of the genome's operating system, the circuitry and switches that control how genes are switched on and off in different cells in the body. But what's been discovered is turning science on its head. Researchers thought most DNA was useless junk. Now it appears it's not. Very little of our genomes are junk. 80% of the genome is engaged in at least one biochemical activity. For a large fraction of the genome, not now 5%, but 80% of the genome, we can say we know that it does something. One says it's the richest material in DNA, material that codes what we do, that calculates what we know, and that functions with energy of a brain in every single cell. On September 17, 1984, while comparing some tiny fragments of human DNA, Alec Jeffries made a discovery that would turn DNA into a household word. I just had a gut feeling at the time that this had the potential for being big. Just how big, I haven't got the faintest idea. Um, but I could see this was new, that I did know. Jeffries was investigating how diseases run in families 
There were many parts of the DNA where he could see inherited patterns, but one region appeared to be unique to an individual, except in the case of identical twins. I am happy that today, the only race we are talking about is the human race. This agreement says, in the strongest possible terms, our genome, the book in which all human life is written, belongs to every member of the human race. It suggested that it would be ultimately possible to identify every human being in the world with a unique readout, like a barcode. Every day, Solera pumped out new sequence data and rushed to take out as many gene patents as possible. The plan was to mine this information to devise new therapies and eventually relaunch themselves as a drug company. When they announced that they were going to try to patent 6,500 genes, human DNA became Wall Street's hottest commodity. People got so excited about what Slera was doing and so excited about the future of genomics. And briefly, the stock went from $8 up to over $500 a share. Just to reiterate this point a little bit, we've been for 40 years only working with 5% of our human DNA and regarding the other 95% of our human DNA as junk. Thank you. 